welcome you all here to Berea United Methodist Church this morning as we come to you via Facebook. I have a few announcements that I'd like to just share, and that is that this is the third Sunday in Lent, and we are on this journey toward Easter together. And part of our journey here at Berea United Methodist Church is to, to parallel the journey of the cocoons to the butterflies. So this week we want to think about how we all have cocoons. It's the struggle to emerge that makes us whole and gives us strength to fly. Let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prayer. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, our dear Berea United Methodist Church brothers and sisters, and everyone who is attending this worship service this morning. We are here at the Paris Hall on Berea United Methodist campus, and this is our little studio church that we are sending this uh, uh, worship service into your homes and living rooms. Let's pray together as we worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we have come together to worship you. Lord, we are physically apart, but we are spiritually one in you. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, we pray, come Holy Spirit, come upon this gathering. May we hear from you, Father, may we see your glory, and may we fall in love with Jesus Christ again this morning as we worship. Amen. We'd like to invite you to sing along with us if you would like to as we sing a couple of today's hymns. The first one being, What Wondrous Love Is This? Oh. 
as we worship this morning in the studio setting, we skip children's time because children we know you are in your homes. We still worship with you and we pray with you together. We skip ministry of giving, but it doesn't mean that we don't pray for all the matters that goes along with these trying times. But we pray together. As we know, our president has declared this day a national day of prayer. And we pray together for our nation, but also for our global family. Trying times like this prove that we are one big family. It don't matter where you live in this world, everything is part of your life and part of my life. Then of course, on our prayer list, we have lots of names. I don't want to go through all these names, my friends, but be sure to know that if you have written your name on our prayer list, you will be included and your name will be included and we will be praying in for you at this time. Also on Sundays, as we know, we have a prayer time at the church, but since the campus is closed today, we don't have that prayer time in the church, but we will be praying in, in our homes between five and six. Or whatever time suits for you, take a moment for prayer. Lifting up our community, our church family, our nation, struggling countries like Italy and many other countries who are very, having very hard time with this virus. But let's pray together as we continue our worship time this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name and we pray. Lord, you know everything about us. We don't have to introduce ourselves or introduce any matters to you, but you are still asking us to pray. And by so doing, Lord, we are expressing the highest level of Christian concern and love we can ever do. So we pray for our nation. We pray for the cities and communities. Everyone, Lord, we pray during these trying times. Please protect us, guide us, give wisdom and courage to our leaders and everyone, everyone in charge. We pray for those who are ill and we ask in recovery and strength for them and healing in Jesus' name. We pray for our dear community here in Berea, Kentucky. We pray for our churches and schools and families and everyone included. We pray for our church family. All the names on our prayer list this morning, Lord, we pray in your name. We pray for those who are recovering from illnesses, asking prayer, uh, prayers for different reasons in their life. Lord Jesus, hear our prayers for the sake of your mercy and love. Lord, we pray for this worship. May it reach out for every heart, everyone who is available to be part of this Worship, worship experience this morning. And we ask your blessing upon every church who is conducting worship services this morning. Maybe not in the physical presence of their church members, but through line and through emails and through Facebook and internet. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us this morning by this gathering and by knowing that you are with us. The best of all is that you are with us and you hear our prayer. As we pray together, as disciples always do, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We have two scriptures we'd like to share with you this morning. Before that, we have a prayer for illumination. Lord, open our, our hearts, hearts and, minds and minds by the power of your spirit, that as the scriptures, scriptures are read and, and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with, with joy what, what you have to say to us today. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture is from Psalm 95. Come, let's sing out loud to the Lord. Let's raise a joyful shout to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanks. Let's shout songs of joy to him. The Lord is a great God, the great king over all other gods. The earth's depths are in his hands. The mountain heights belong to him. The sea which he made is his along with the dry ground which his own hands formed. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before the Lord, our maker. He is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep in his hands. If only you would listen to his voice right now. Don't harden your hearts like you did at Meribah, like you did when you were at Massah in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and scrutinized me, even though they had already seen my acts. For 40 years, I despised that generation. I said, these people have twisted hearts. They don't know my ways. So in anger, I swore they will never enter my place of rest. Our second scripture today is from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. Now the Lord was going to take Elijah up to heaven in a windstorm. And Elijah and Elisha were leaving Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me to Bethlehem. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came out to Elisha. These prophets said to Elisha, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Elisha said, yes, I know. Don't talk about it. Elijah said, Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So they went to Jericho. The group of prophets from Jericho approached Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? He said, yes, I know. Don't talk about it. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you live, I won't leave you. So both of them went on together. 50 members from the group of prophets also went along, but they stood at a distance. Both Elijah and Elisha stood beside the Jordan River. Elijah then took his coat rolled it up and hit the water. Then the water was divided in two. Both of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, what do you want me to do for you before I'm taken away from you? Elisha said, let me have twice your spirit. Elijah said, you've made a difficult request. If you can see me when I'm taken from you, then it will be yours. If you don't see me, it won't happen. They were walking along, talking, 
when suddenly a fiery chariot and fiery horses appeared and separated the two of them. Then Elijah went to, to heaven in a windstorm. Elisha was watching, and he cried out, Oh, my father, my father, Israel's chariots and its riders. When he could no longer see him, Elisha took hold of his clothes and ripped them in two. Then Elisha picked up the coat that had fallen from Elijah. He went back and stood beside the banks of the Jordan River. He took the coat that had fallen from Elijah and hit the water. He said, Where is the Lord, Elijah's God? And when he hit the water, it divided in two. Then Elisha crossed over. The group of prophets from Jericho saw him from a distance. They said, Elijah's spirit has settled on Elisha. So they came out to meet him, bowing down before him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, my friends. Within a few days, so many strange things has happened to us all, not just here in Berea, Kentucky, but all over the world. We are worshiping and sending this worship from the studio setting instead of being in a sanctuary surrounded by our church family and friends. No handshakes, no words of encouragement be heard Yet we are still worshiping this morning. We truly are worshiping. Now we may be physically apart, but we are spiritually together as one family, one people of God in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. Because of these trying times, we need to be emphasizing something maybe different than we haven't been emphasizing enough. Namely, one thing is the power of prayer. I'm asking every church family member and everyone who is with us this morning through this worship, please exercise your prayer. Pray a lot. Pray for this world. Pray for different countries. Pray for your home community, your family. Cover everyone in prayer in Jesus' name. Your prayers mean so much more than you ever believed. Maybe this is a lesson to be learned, a little bit different, a new way, what power there is in your prayers. Stay in touch with your family. Stay in touch with your friends. Stay in touch with your church family by phone calls. Give your friends phone call. Email them a little message of encouragement. Send them a letter or card. And talk to them and chat with them on Facebook if you have one. Because God is still God and the Lord is still Lord. And our prayers mean so much. So we can meet on prayer altar and we can exercise the highest level of Christian commitment and love and grace through our prayers. So this third Sunday in Lent is a little bit different, very different from the Sundays that I remember. Although the whole Lenten season is a reminder to us that we need to stay focused. We need to stay focused. And our focus is, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that during this time of land, this 40 days of walk prior Easter, we will be more ready to celebrate Easter, to really think about deeply what truly happened to our Lord Jesus Christ as he suffered for us, as he took our place on the cross and he died for all our sins. And what what does it mean that he rose again and through the, his glorious uh, victory over the cross, he earned salvation and victory for us all? So yes, this morning we are physically apart, but we are physically and spiritually united through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And by the presence of his Holy Spirit, we are together this morning. Now our scripture reading comes from the Old Testament. It was fairly long, but it should have been actually much longer for us to little, really grasp what this whole narrative is all about. I believe, by the way, the story of and about Elijah and Elisha 
is one of the most fascinating stories in the whole Old Testament. Let's try to see what we can learn from them and let's listen to what we can learn from Elisa about staying focused, keeping his faith and staying alert what Lord is possibly speaking to us. Now, focus is very important as we all know. Uh, one night I watched a football game on TV. Now, the game was pretty tight. I don't want to talk about what team was playing. It wasn't Louisville or Kentucky or anything like that. But it was two very, very, very good teams. And they were playing hard and the game was very tight. The team who had the ball was up to a field goal. And then the guy, the field goal kicker came in and kicked the ball. And what happened, the ball went tens of inches off the goal. So instead of winning that game by a couple of points, they end up losing it by one point. As a former hockey player, I noticed when this young guy, this field goal kicker came in, I thought he wasn't focusing. I believe he was already celebrating that type uh, win and victory over uh, the uh, other team. And then what happened, his, the ball went tens of inches off the goal. Well, you may say, Pastor, that's just a football. What's the big deal here? Well, let me take another example. For example, a pilot preparing to land his aircraft must remain focused to land safely. You know, there are two critical times on flying the, air, uh, the aircraft. It is a taking off and then landing. Now, life is not easy, as we all are witnessing this morning. Second things to demonstrate this principle in the account of Elijah and Elisa. This account reveals that Elisa refused to do anything that would cause him to lose his focus. He wanted to be a true, true follower of his mentor, Elijah. But first of all, he wanted to be a true follower of Lord. Apostle Paul in the New Testament understood this principle when he expressed his desire in Philippians 3. Listen what Paul says to us this morning about staying in focus. He says, it is not that I have already reached this goal or have already been perfect, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold on me for just the purpose, for this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I have reached it but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the price of God's upward call in Jesus Christ for me. Let's go back to this Old Testament story that we are, um, that is before us this morning. First of all, according to the scripture, I truly believe that this young man, his name was Elisa, refused to lose his focus because he pursued what he knew. He pursued what he knew, refusing any other directions because he was pursuing what he knew. What is it he knew? He knew that he was called by God. He knew that God was powerful. God was almighty. God was, God was God above any other circumstances in this world. More powerful than anybody else in this world. Secondly, he knew that he had made a very radical decision to be a true follower of God. It was radical decision from young man. Also, he knew that he had a specific purpose in this life. Well, for him, it was to take over the title called National Prophet from Elijah. Now that may be not my call or your goal, but we have our purpose that God has given to us. And then one more thing, Elijah knew that he had seen God's work. He's been witnessing so much God's grace and mercy and love and power that he believed there's no way I can just leave this all behind or forget it. I got to stay focused and I need to follow this one who has called me. 
Now, secondly, I believe, according to what our scripture reading says this morning, this young man, Elisa, refused to lose focus and he expected what he pursued, refusing to think any other way. He had great hopes about God and from God. Now, we are living in very trying times all over the world, also here in Kentucky and here in Berea, Kentucky. When we keep our focus and we stay focused, we keep our prayer lines open. And when you and I, when we pray about and for these circumstances, Lord opens up avenues for grace and his power, and we start witnessing wonderful miracles and powerful things that God will perform. There's no way to say what all good can, can, that God can work out from these trying times. Now, Elisa expected something to happen because God is always about something. God is always about something good. Even during trying times like this, wait and see, God is always up to something good. Now, Elisa expected that he could participate because God delights use men and women in his work, like you and I, my friend. Don't underestimate yourself. Even you feel you are kind of paralyzed. You are probably sitting at home only and there's no way to do anything else physically. Yet there is. Maybe there is the most powerful thing that you have ever tried hard enough and that is your prayers and you can do it. You can exercise it today. And you can, start exercise, you, you can start exercising it every single day after today. Now, Elisa, this young follower of God, remained focused, expecting that God was at work. God was at work. And then finally, according to what this scripture says, while staying focused, Elisa received what he expected. He received what he was expecting, and he used what he had received from God for the ministry. He was in a position to see God's work. He witnessed God's at work, and Eliza received what he expected, the assurance that God was still there and would use him after taking his master, Elijah. One, one Sunday, not two months, uh, not too long time, long time ago, excuse me, I preached about how God is almighty and above everything. And I didn't know that I was preaching for myself beforehand, confirming something to my heart and to my soul that I've been struggling during these trying times and days. As a pastor trying to make the season on uh, about over matters that I feel that is way beyond my hand and my heart. But God is truly about everything. He's almighty. But God is also imminent. God is God who comes near to us and close to us. And during these times that we don't know much about, they go beyond our hands and we feel there's so much unknown. Be sure to know my friend who is listening to this worship this morning. God is God who is imminent. God is God who has his ways to come near to us and close to us, to bless us, to encourage us, to lift us up, to lift us up. And so Elisa Eli knew that God is God and who can do wonderful things despite of circumstances, despite of his loss. Now losing his mentor who was taken up into the heavens was lonely, this young man was lonely, but he knew that God is powerful, that God can use him as he can use anybody. And something to take home this morning, as we are thinking about and we are considering, considering what all I can do and what God has to me and to us all during these trying times. If we refuse to lose our focus, as Eliza did, Pursuing what we know, expecting God to work as he truly is working, and to be ready to use what we receive, God will bring us through us, through these trying times, beyond our imagination. 
he will prove that he is God of power and God who is almighty. But we must refuse to lose our focus because God is using you and God is using us to make things better. In the midst of the unexpected and difficulties, will you refuse to lose your focus, my friend, and expect that your God is at work as I speak, so you can receive what he has for you and for us and for us all, and he can use you to accomplish his plan, what is always good. Devil can destroy things, and darkness is out there, no question. But God is above circumstances, and he is God who is powerful and who is imminent, God who comes close to us in any given circumstances. Please join with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can take an example and we can follow Elisha's example. Not to lose focus, but stay in focus and to keep our faith in you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that during times that we feel that we don't have things together and we don't have things in control, under our control, we know, Lord, that you have everything under your perfect control. And we come to you, Lord, through prayer. And we ask, Lord, help us to be Christians who exercise their highest level of love and power and grace through prayer. Help us to be Christians who are asking, what is it I can do to bring this all together? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We invite you to join us in this closing hymn, which is also a prayer. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us through Facebook today. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and your, your support and commitment to your church and to our church and this community and to this country. Before we close today, please join with me in the blessing. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.